Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com. We are here at the Ed Sullivan Theater checking out the gear that is used by the guitarist and bass player for The Late Show with David Letterman. So we're going to start with you, Sid, and uh, Hi, start with the guitars that you're using. You want to tell us about this one? This is, uh, this is it. This is the uh, Desert Island guitar, which I purchased in 1975. It's a uh, 1955 Stratocaster. And uh, it was refinished when I bought it when it was only 20 years old and it had already been changed and it's been my main go-to guitar ever since then um, so this is this is the one of the two strats that I rotate here um, recently I, I got a 1954 first year refinished wrong pickups everything just like this I don't own anything that's pristine they're all mutt rat dogs player guitars but this is this is what it all goes back to um, what other changes have been made on this one um, the uh, uh, bridge and neck coils are, the, the magnets are original. Seymour Duncan has rewound both of them twice. <laughs> <laughs> they just go, and then I have an ESP reverse wound in the middle from the 90s for the hum canceling thing and all that. Um, I basically, I, I use um, capacitor and resistor networks on the volume control to keep the tone even as you turn down. Um, I rewire my tone control so the one down here uh, runs the bridge pickup, the one up here runs the rhythm pickup, and the middle pickup is always full on tone. And so I've got the two quiet positions. So that's that. Um, there, most of my guitars are refretted with the really high Dunlop 6105s, uh, real high, not that wide. Uh, and um, I use auto, auto body imperial hand glazed instead of wax on the guitars. I'm a little nuts. <laughs> and to cap it off, every time I change strings, I have an old 20-year-old fret crowning file with no teeth left on it, and I actually brush the frets. I spend 10 minutes on the frets, put new strings on, so I always have new action. So that's, that's kind of the guitar end. I'm, I'm a little nuts with this. And with the, uh, the wiring and everything, is that the same in the other strat too? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And you have a telecast, oh, a broadcaster? Is that a reissue? No, no, not a reissue. This is this is a this is an extreme mutt. Um, I believe this to be a broadcaster neck. You, you never know with this stuff. Yeah. This is a late '50s ratted out body that you know I contoured, uh, refinished. Um, there's an RC network in here also. Um, I forget what the bridge pickup is. The rhythm pickup is uh, my friend Jim Weeder has this big T big telly pickup and he came up with this ingenious design with the magnets and the windings and the wire gauge and everything and it's it's louder and brighter and it's just a great telly rhythm pickup um, and same thing the high frets uh, so yeah this is the backup mutt telly I have two others I have like a, a even closer to real broadcaster and then a 96 fender um, uh, no caster relic so the three tellies, the two strats, and, and then for the Gibson thing, um, there are no humbucking guitars. No, <laughs> no. Everything's single coil. Uh, this is actually a real 52 um, gold top. It was a gold top. Now it's pea soup green. Horrible refinish. But uh, I found this, I don't know, 12 years ago. It had been uh, changed to the tunematic. Um, this is one of the few first year Les Pauls where the neck was not reset. It's never been cracked and the action was high. So what, to fix it, I took the tunematic off and ground about an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the bridge. So it sits down and it plays like butter. It's fantastic, it's light. Uh, once again, Duncan did a reverse underwind P90 so I get a quiet position and, and I mess around with all the controls. And, but uh, so there. So, you, so generally, when you get a guitar, you, it's, it's immediately to where you need it to be. It, 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 they're usually already kind of screwed up, and then I'll take it from there, but I'll find something where I know I can work with it. And, uh, and I do pretty much everything myself except the frets. I've got a guy in Connecticut that's Bob Piper, who's fantastic. Well, and leave the pickup winding to Seymour. Yeah, 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 Seymour does that. So that's, that's All right. the basic guitars. There's, there's a few more. I, only, I have about 12 electric guitars. 
I have about 35 amplifiers. Uh -huh. So you can see right. that's that's where my heart is. Well, then let's move on to the amplifiers that are, have okay. the little Sid Tone logo on it. Yeah, so. um, this was my main rig here for two or three years. And um, ver ver you know variations of this. This is actually a, it's a 96, I think, uh, Fender Pro Junior that I modified. And what I do is I, I take a line out off of the speaker using resistors and stuff and then run that into a slave amp which that's a high power tweed twin that I built from scratch with um, you know Mojo makes cabinets and chassis and all that and you get the parts and I have all the resistors and caps and schematics and everything and tubes and uh, so I wired that up so I run a line out out of this little 15 water into this 80 water and you, you get all your compression and tone out of the little amp and then all the bottom comes back and reinforcement so I can basically take this thing anywhere and they can give me any any amplifier that they have whatever's on site and it'll sound fine with this in front of it so that was the concept that's now my backup rig this <laughs> right. um, with all the years, you know, building amps and redesigning them, I, I finally reached a wall when it came to relays and channel switching. But um, my friend Jim Weeder again hoisted this on me. This was a, it's a 1963 Showman that Bill Crenard, who was the partner in Two Rock, um, he modified this thing. It's basically copying one of the Dumble type circuits, but it has relays and everything. And um, nothing was relabeled. It took me eight hours to figure out how it worked. Uh, there's seven gain, seven volume controls on the front, the back, inside. Um, and the first day I had it here, it runs so hot that I turned it off and a half hour after the show, I couldn't touch the back panel. I said, this thing's going upside down. That's why I flipped it. And I tell people that's the one good idea Jim Marshall had when he stole Leo Fender's tweed basement, he turned it upside down. <laughs> So the, the tube heat goes up. But um, that's that. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a channel switcher. And then I throw, also throw pedals in front of that. And, uh, so what are you running through for the cab on this one? Do you guys? Uh, the cab on this, well, this I had, I generally had, you know, a four ohm bandmaster cabinet. But because this is a single showman, it's eight ohm output. Uh, my friend Jim Weeder again gave me these prototype two 16-ohm speakers, so I have an 8-ohm cabinet. Um, they're eminence copies of a nailer or something. Um, and that works great. So that's an 8-ohm setup. Um, and that's a 4-ohm setup. If I bring a different head in, I can run through these speakers. So that's kind of that. Cool. Well, you want to move on and talk about the okay. pedals a little bit? Uh, I basically... I got my old 1975 MSA pedal steel here, which is still fantastic, stays in tune. If I don't play it for a year, it's still in tune. Uh, <laughs> I don't play it much here, but it's, it's a great thing to have. It makes sort of a music stand. Um, so the different guitars, I go in the volume pedal, and instead of, that's how I switch. I just turn the volume off and replug the cable. And then the volume goes to the wah-wah. Um, forget exactly what it is it's some old Clyde McCoy or something um, with a true bypass built into that um, then into the old uh, you know probably had this since the late 80s boss pedal board uh, noise suppressor first power supply master switch and then just it's basically just kind of four pedals you know the, the old uh, tube screamer from I think from the 80s is that original? That's that's stock, yeah. Um, th my favorite pedal, the 3995 DS1, but with the analog man chip in it. Okay. Um, it really brings the thing up, and uh, that gives me a different kind of drive than I get out of the amplifier or the tube screamer. So I have options of, you know, if I want complete mayhem, you throw them both on in front of that, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to use the right hand. Uh, um, the flanger is my one oddball. Um, I let the chorus go in uh, late 80s, never used it after that. I've never used reverb, um, but the flanger, you know, I can simulate a Leslie, uh, just do weird slow sweep stuff, uh, if there's a, or a, a fake electric sitar. It's, it's sort of in there. Yeah, sort of. Um, and then the digital delay, um, 
mainly used for short 50s, you know, rockabilly slap echo, or what most people call the edge thing. I call it the Chet Atkins thing, which is the dotted quarter note delay, because he's the first person I heard do that, where you play a scale, da 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 and it goes down, da 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 So that, you know, between 350 and 420 milliseconds, and I just know manually where to dial it in. That's for most of the U2 stuff we do or whatever. And a tremulator, um, it still works. Um, the, 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 the Boss Tremolo is great also. I have one of those. But, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. It's fairly simple. Um, we have to cover a wide variety of stuff. Yeah. And um, I don't have to bring in extra pedals very often. You know, every once in a while, Paul will insist on the Vinnie Bell Coral Electric Sitar, or I have a, a, a Dan Electro... Um, solo body 12 string for certain beetles birds type stuff that i'll bring down from upstairs um but it's pretty basic nice. you know yeah you know, besides all of the many mods and tweaks <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah um for sure and so just in terms of picks slides and uh, uh, all that what are you using um the uh, pedal steel bar is a well when, I don't even know what it is. Jim Dunlop. Anyway, I, I like this is. I actually have a heavier one at home. It's better, but um, this is. Uh, it's probably Dunlop also the mudslide. Mm -hmm. This works great. Um, capo. Um, I learned early on in the studio when to cheat. <laughs> you know, make things easy. Always have a capo ready. Don't use the finger picks much. Even on steel, sometimes I don't use them. Yeah. And um, just. You know, D'Addario, uh, mediums are heavy. The blue ones are sort, sort of heavy. The green ones are medium. And um, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. So you're using, are you using wireless systems then? No. Okay. No. So you guys are going all cables? Uh, yeah, I've always liked cables. I know wireless has gotten a lot better since the last time yeah. I used it 20-some years ago. They have wireless systems that allow you to, like, dial in how much it sounds like a cable now. Right, right. <laughs> and that's a lot of what cabling is. Yeah. It's how much high-end loss do you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and I guess you guys aren't moving around. You're not, you're not running around the stage too, no. too terribly much. No. Um, I did have my... I, I know everybody else in the band has the in-ear molds, and I enjoyed the process of getting molded. But when it comes to having them in, it's like I didn't start playing electric guitar to have my ears plugged up. So... Got my trusty old six six dollar Radio Shack, and uh, I, they stopped making this model. I don't know why. They're twice as loud as any other headphone, and they're like earmuffs in a way. They yeah. block certain sounds out. I get what I need. I look silly. I don't care. <laughs> um, but that's but I can hear my amplifier, and I can physically hear Anton, Felicia, and Will, and then I get, you know, Paul and the horns and whatever vocals I need in here. So it's. That's my juggling act. Perfect. Oh, and you've been doing this for the show for a long time, so it sounds like you've got it pretty dialed in. Four. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to show us around the rig. We really appreciate it. We are here at the Ed Sullivan Theater at the Late Show with David Letterman, talking with Willie and the rest of the band members about what you guys are using each night. You want to start out by telling us a little bit about uh, the bases that you use on a regular basis. Okay. Well, because of the. Uh, crazy array of songs that we're called on to do every night or every year or every week. Uh, you know, you need a few, a few tools to pull it off. And, you know, one of those things, uh, one of those things includes like an occasional five string experience. So we have the Sadowski five, which you can't live without. Is that, is that just one of their production models? That is an old, old Sadowski. Uh, they've now just put into production a Will Lee model, which I'll be using starting soon, because I'm using it in the studio every day, so it's really great. This is an indispensable Line 6 Variax bass, which of course does impressions of many, many instruments, you know, Hofners and and Gibsons and 12 strings and 8 strings and I use it a lot for acoustic bass sound because it's got a really great modeled old K upright bass sound so I love this thing for, for all kinds of reasons. Use it a lot. Here is a bass that 
Ends up never getting much love except when I want to pose. It's an old Vox, very, very rare, teardrop shaped, solid body, four string bass. What, do you know what year that's from? 60s, you know. I, I, as far as I know, it might be Italian made, I'm not sure. Because uh, a company in Italy started out, they bought Vox and then Thomas Organ or the other way around. So, I don't know, it's kind of a, it's just a fascinating thing to have. What, what does that sound like? Well, it sounds kind of, uh, kind of precision-y, I think, even, even though it has a, more of a jazz bass configuration, pickup-wise. So, you know, it sounds as good as you can make it sound. There you go. It's all in the fingers, as, as Jocko once said. This uh, is indispensable, flat-wound, precision bass. Still has the sticker on it. American Standard by Fender. This is great for Motown stuff, for James Jamerson type things. You know, for Duck Dunn kind of things, like Booker T and EMGs. And just general grooving. This, of course, if you ever want to get into beetle mode, you, you have to have some kind of a, a, a Hufner at your disposal. And this I find very sexy, even though it's not a beetle bass. I just love the, this uh, single cutaway version of this great instrument. Uh, this has a, uh, this is sometimes called the Ranger bass, sometimes called a, the club bass, but here's the Hofner for, for all your Beatle needs. You're pretty much just using that for Beatles type stuff? Yeah. yeah. That's when I, you know, want to get in the mood. Yeah. But of course, you know, if you want to really play Beatle music, you have to have the, the McCartney violin model. So anyway, this is my baby. This is the Sadowski uh, will the four string, which I love playing on. It's got all kinds of great things about it, including a mid-range switch where you can preset, you can go into the back, preset your mid-range setting and jump right to it by clicking this button right here. Go right into, into, your, into position. And this uh, allows you to bypass the preamp, which is really fantastic, and still have tone control. Because Sadowski came up with this great vintage tone control thing, which allows you even in passive mode to, to control your tone as well as your volume, as well as your pickup, you know, back and forth between the two pickups. And I'm grooving on, on this uh, soap bar configuration these days, loving that one, so it's fun. Got the, uh, the, the hip shot detuner, which I, I tune to a C. I love it. All right, so we checked out the bases. Let's uh, take a look at what you're plugging those into. Uh, here for monitoring, I'm using this great Harky LH1000 with 410 cab, which is indispensable. I also use these on live gigs, as a rule, these days. JDI direct box, passive direct box by Radial, which is indispensable. I like the passive because I never have to think about power supplying battery-wise or AC-wise, so it's easy, easy pickings for me. So for the show sound, that's what we hear, it's just going direct. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And you hear ambient stuff coming from here. Sure. All right, and then You've got a couple of things on the floor here. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so the floor deal is, this is, uh, this is my go-to thing for like all my gigs these days. It's the Boss GT-10B, and the great thing about it is I sort of understand it. Um, it's, it's not exactly the same as having every individual pedal, blah, blah, blah. But as far as programmability and as far as getting to sounds and as far as having, you know, you know, like almost limitless array of different kinds of effects, I keep it at this one setting for this show. And the great thing is you can name your, 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 your uh, banks, you know. This, this bank is called Late Show Rocks, right? So that's sort of my default thing. And if I want to kick in some heavy octave, I go right here. This is fuzz, as you can hear. This is my bwomp bwomp machine, otherwise known as an envelope, which I love. And you know, if you want to get fancy, we can, Ashford and Simpson were on, I found a perfect patch for the song Solid that sounds just like the record. And you know, here's a Hofner setting. Uh, here's a guitar solo sound, which brings it up an octave, which I rarely use here because we have such great guitarists. Here's a ridiculous sound called Outrage. <laughs> Phaser, this is for like, money, 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 money. Thank you, Anthony Jackson. Um, all, you know, just endless, endless, endless sounds, hundreds of sounds. So what's the uh, Late Show Rocks, kind of what are you doing with that? That's just the basic 
plug in, and here's your direct sound. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. We are here at the Ed Sullivan Theater at The Late Show with David Letterman, talking to Felicia and all the other band members about the gear that they're using on stage. Uh, you want to start by telling us about the main guitars that you're using every night? Every night or tonight? Tonight. Okay. Let's talk tonight. tonight. Tonight, I think I'm going to use my telly. Okay. Hammer telly, which I love. It's got my godson's little artwork on it. Okay, this will probably be what I start with. And then lately, I've been playing with a couple of Les Pauls. I had one that was made for me, that, which is gorgeous. You can, I'm going to let you play this later, because I, I know you're dying to. Yeah. All right, and then I'll probably back it up with this one. And um, every once in a while, Paul will call a song that requires an acoustic guitar, and I always have one. This one is my Taylor. Yeah, or, or either I'll have like a, a Hamer duotone, which can switch quickly back to electric, because sometimes there's just no time. You handle all of the acoustic parts then? Yes. Yes, I do. 12 string, yeah. 6 string. Just, and if you notice, for some reason, I've become a conga player. <laughs> <laughs> and so just like swing the guitar around back? And yeah, swing the guitar around and swing the congas out like that. And then next thing you know, I'm jamming. Next thing you know, it's, it's dashiki time. So with the, uh, with the guitars, are those all stock, or do you have any mods that you do to them? Well, actually, yeah, I do. You know what? Some of my guitars, I have them pitched, just pitched a certain oh. way. Yeah, because that, that helps me out a great deal for playing up really, really, really high. And uh, that's about it. Some, maybe sometimes I'll get extra fat frets put on some of my guitars and, um, or a veritone switch oh, yeah. or something like that. You know, and that, that's about it. I don't usually, like, when I, if I get a, a good hammer, my Les Pauls, I don't, I'm, let me turn this off. I don't mess with it too much because, you know, they're good to begin with. The guitars I build, I'm, <laughs> it's, they're, they're a little more shaky. Yeah. You know, I'm always taking parts out and putting different pickup. So you, you, and, you and Sid both tinkering a lot. Yeah, yeah. Sid gave me these great telly pickups that actually I, I had, a, um, it came out pretty good. I put it in, put it in my, uh, my other telly and it sounds fantastic. Sounds great. It hasn't it hasn't fallen apart yet, even in spite of the fact that I put it in. Nice. So are you are you generally using like the Les Pauls, the humbucker guitars, because he's using the single coils, or is it just like on a per song? Pretty much, or just what you know, whatever I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> whatever matches. Yeah, right. I I mean, there's so many guitars that I have yeah. upstairs that I literally will make the decision based on the colors I'm wearing. That's fine. Now you know, <laughs> like when you watch the show. <laughs> And what are you plugging, plugging them into then, amp-wise? Well, today... <laughs> today, actually, today you know, in particular. No, actually, you, lately I've been playing this crate, which I love, because I can pick it up and put it in a purse. Yes. And it's 130 watts, this tiny little thing. It's single coil, but, you know, it still sounds good. I love it. This is what I'm using all the time. And I got a DV mark that I switch back and forth from. And I uh, use the DV Mark cabinet. It's a great cabinet. Cool. It's good for here because yeah. it's, it's kind of small here. Like it looks big on TV, but it's, as you can see, it's not that, no, that big. I know. It, it, it is a lot smaller than it looks on TV. Right, so then right. I guess you've got uh, an array of pedals then there that you're using as yeah. well. Can you talk about those a little bit? Yes, I can. Currently, this is my little, you know what? I had, I had like a super computer deal going on for a while but it just got a little too complicated for how quickly we change and do unexpected things so I had to go back to just basic pedals and um, I got my whammy pedal here I have my tuner my noise suppressor boss wah and um, this thing death by audio I love this thing it's really it's really super grungy and I use this just for like a slight, because the, the crate is just clean. There's no overdrive or anything like that. There's, it's only one channel. So my death by audio, I just have uh, two settings on here, like a slight blues grit and then more of a drive, a super drive. And then this is just like, you know, death metal, this zoom pedal right here. So yeah, a fan gave me that. He came by to have his guitar signed and brought me this pedal. And, I love it. It's been, it's been on the floor ever since. It's been about seven years now. And then here's my little H2O um, chorus. 
and delay, and I use this for a short, just a short slapback delay, just like on leads. And then this digital delay I use for, for like real effects, like bird sounds and stuff like that. We do a couple Beatles songs, which has birds at the top, or either Minnie Ripperton, this song that Dave always asks for, which drives me crazy because it's very hard to sing. Minnie Ripperton, anything. And then this, this right here, this Digitech is just, I got this specifically for um, a couple of uh, Simi songs. Simi is a band that we like that's got some like crazy uh, like reverb and flange effects. So I, just, I got that basically just for their songs, even though there's a, a million different settings in this thing. Yeah. And that's it for now until I switch them out and put something else in there. You never know. I look over here sometimes. Oh, yeah. See, there's anywhere you look, you might be able to find it. <laughs> Here's a DOD, Donny Osmond device, <laughs> Ottawa. You guys switch up the rig a little yeah, bit know, from night to night. Yeah, because it's every day. It's every single day. We play every song known to man and woman. So, you know. And there's Will Lee. Oh. All right. Oh, this is a good pedal. The Voodoo Lab Micro Vibe. You got to have one of these, man. <laughs> Gotta have oh, they are. They're just pedals around every corner. Yeah, pedals, pedals, pedals. Cool. Um, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I appreciate you taking some time to show us through the rig. And, oh, wait, the most important oh. thing, the heater. Oh, nice. I, these studios are cold. I have. And there's cold. one above me as well. Nice. Now, today it's not, I guess because we've been off for like 14 days, they haven't had a chance to freeze it up yet. Yeah. <laughs> but give it a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Pleasure, Rebecca. Thanks a lot. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com.